chapter nine of part one of the lives of the three mrs judsons by arabella m wilson this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter nine distressing events mr judson's absence from rangoon persecution of mr hugh his departure for bengal mrs judson's heroic fortitude mr judson's return we have now to relate some distressing events connected with the mission which for a time threatened its very existence mr judson having decided to commence a course of public preaching to the natives thought best to secure the assistance of a native convert from the province of arakan who spoke the burman language to assist him in his first public efforts he therefore embarked for that province leaving mrs judson to continue her efforts with the females under her instruction while mr and mrs hugh were to prosecute the study of the language he intended to be gone but three months but at the end of that period when his return was daily expected a vessel from chittagong the port to which he had sailed arrived at rangoon bringing the distressing tidings that neither he nor the vessel he had sailed in had been heard of at that port letters received by mrs judson from bengal also brought similar intelligence while the missionaries left in rangoon were in this state of fearful alarm and suspense mr hugh received an order to repair instantly to the court-house with a threat that if he did not tell all the truth in relation to the foreigners they would write with his heart's blood this message spread consternation among the native teachers domestics and adherents some of whom had heard that a royal order had arrived for the banishment of all foreign teachers mr hugh was detained at the court-house from day to day in the most flimsy pretenses ignorant of the language and with no one to intercede with the government on his behalf for it was contrary to etiquette for a woman to appear before the viceroy his family being absent mrs judson being at length convinced that the petty officers of the government were acting in this matter without authority and for the purpose of extorting money from mr hugh with the intrepidity that always marked her character taking her life in her hand went boldly to the palace with a petition for his release the viceroy immediately granted it and commanded that mr hugh should receive no further molestation to add to the distresses of the missionaries the cholera now raged around them with fearful violence and there were rumours of war between england and burma six months had passed and still the fate of mr judson was a fearful mystery the english vessels were hastening their departure from the harbour and soon they would have no means of leaving the country whatever might occur mrs judson writes mr hugh has been for some time past desirous to have mrs hugh his children and myself go to bengal but i have ever felt resolved not to make any move till i hear from mr judson within a few days however some circumstances have occurred which have induced me to make preparations for a voyage there is but one remaining ship in the river and if an embargo is laid on english ships it will be impossible for mr judson if he is yet alive to return to this place but the uncertainty of meeting him in bengal and the possibility of his arriving in my absence cause me to make preparations with a heavy heart sometimes i feel inclined to remain here alone and hazard the consequences i should certainly conclude on this step if any probability existed of mr judson's return this mission has never appeared in so low a state as at the present time it seems now entirely destroyed as we well expect to embark for bengal in a day or two alas how changed are our prospects since mr judson left us how dark how intricate the providence that now surrounds us yet it becomes us to be still and know that he is god who has thus ordered our circumstances a fortnight later she writes alone my dear friends in this great house i take my pen to record this strange vicissitudes through which i have passed within the few days on the fifth of this month i embarked with mr hugh and the family for bengal having previously disposed of what i could not take with me my disinclination to proceed had increased to such a degree that i was on the point of giving up the voyage but my passage was paid my baggage on board and i knew not how to separate myself from the rest of the mission family the vessel however was several days in going down the river and before putting out to sea was to be detained a day or two longer at its mouth 
i immediately resolved on giving up the voyage and returning to town accordingly the captain sent up a boat with me and agreed to forward my baggage the next day i reached town in the evening spent the night at the house of the only remaining englishman in the place and to-day have come out to the mission-house to the great joy of all the burmans left on our premises mr hugh and his family will proceed and they kindly and affectionately urge my return i know i am surrounded by dangers on every hand and expect to see much anxiety and distress but at present i am tranquil and intend to make an effort to pursue my studies as formerly and leave the event with god thus did this heroic woman with that divine instinct that seems to guide the noblest creatures in great emergencies decide to return alone to the mission-house there to wait the return of her husband or the confirmation of her worst fears concerning his fate it was a wonderful exhibition of courage and constancy and gave assurance of all the distinguished qualities which at a later period and amid danger still more appalling shone with such brightness around the character of this remarkable woman the event justified her determination and within a week after her decision was taken mr judson arrived at rangoon having been driven from place to place by contrary winds and having entirely failed of the object for which he undertook the voyage mr and mrs hugh after long delays reached bengal carrying with them the press and all the implements of the printing-house their removal was subsequently productive of many embarrassments to the mission and seems never to have been fully justified either by mr judson or the board of managers in america End of chapter nine